Hey, Jared, this one's yours, buddy. Uh, thank you so much again for setting this up and like all the AMAs and sharing such amazing knowledge from all these community professionals with the, the wider Threado community. So just want to say thank you again. Really, really appreciate, you know, this, this exchange um, and all these lessons learned from everybody. So uh, yeah, thank you again for your question as well, um, or questions. Again, another two-parter. I'll do my best to answer them here. Um, the first one, you've had a ton of experience building communities on Slack. So what battle-tested initiatives uh, that work well for community engagement? Um, yeah, uh, this is, I mean, I think we've all noticed, especially when there's like competing distractions for your community members, how do you kind of, you know, jazz up Slack, make it an exciting place for, for folks to come back to? Um, I probably have three things that now I've like thought of off the top of my mind here. So the first thing is setting expectations. So this one's like a day one thing, just like right from the get go. So one thing is having, like we do it on deck, no code is having like an actual session on like how to actually use Slack, um, and showing people like what good looks like. So again, you'd be surprised and people use Slack in different contexts. People use other different like shared tools and whatnot as well too. But just like showing not only like what the guidelines are, are of your community, but like also like posts of like what even forms a good question. And like, is it maybe even proceeding with the right emoji or is it um, just like how it's structured in like if you do an ask and offers channel, like is the ask even clear? And you'd be kind of surprised on sometimes that gets lost or even just like threading um, messages because sometimes, you know, your Slack channels can get a little crazy and messy. Um, I think just like setting those expectations at the start is like a really key one. Um, number two, yeah, stems from stems from all that, but like leading by example. So again, showing people what good looks like. You have to be posting yourself on Slack. Again, this may be an obvious thing, but you want to be showing people the examples of what to expect in, of the posts in each of the different channels. Um, and then as you kind of set the example, start to highlight and like cheer out like with other or different members of your community that also are, you know, having great questions, great posts. And then everyone else starts to understand like, oh, this is what good looks like. I'll start to be more mindful and intentful of what I post on Slack. Um, and also it goes with that too, is setting examples of almost having like a, a Slack document uh, that people can refer to if they need to rem remind themselves of like what goes on what channel and using actually the dis channel descriptions as well too um, for like quick reminders. Again, we're probably all like full of 8,000 different Slack channels. They all maybe have slightly different um, rules to them. So like if you can kind of provide those guidelines in a very visible way, that definitely helps. Um, the third one is, yeah, create a few little rituals and they can just be even like fun rituals within your Slack space. It could be, again, like share a photo of your pets on Fridays, starting off the week with like an easy poll or like, you know, what did you do over the weekend? Um, yeah, just like low friction ways for your community to engage and that they expect at the exact same time. It can even just be like, you know, a rate you know, if you, if you do like a podcast in your community, just like, you know, leave a comment. It's going to come out at this certain time of week. Like everyone can come and like leave a review, leave a comment or something like that. And like almost do it async slash together, um, within the same hour or something. So you've already got that going to AMA. So kudos to that. Um, your second question. Okay. According to you, what do you consider the highest value that defines a solid community builder? Um, yeah, I was thinking about this one. I would want to say one thing that really, I really learned from on deck is really this idea of like meeting people where they're at. And I think I didn't really fully understand what that was until you actually get to, you know, meet all your members of your community and understand all the variety of contexts that they come to your community from again, whether it's, you know, the day that they're having at work, what's going on with their family, you know, some of their personal life. So really striving to like understand where people are coming from and meeting them where they're coming from. So Examples of that we use at on deck are just like if somebody is, you know, looking to talk to somebody about fundraising, not just kind of like dropping their name, but like in, in like a DM on Slack, but like actually linking to their profile and even just going a step further of like, do you want to set, like me to set up an intro for you? I think that kind of compassion really marks like a really high value community manager. Um, and I'd say the, uh, the, the mental framework that we use at on deck is, is just like make good days. And what that does is kind of like takes the stress off of like making sure everyone is perfect at all times. Um, and like forever into the future. And that's totally out of your control. But if you could just make that day good, just for one person, um, and just like make their day, just taking that 